morning, my friends. In a park I've never been to, named the Pine Lands. So I figured our first view should probably be of the pines. This uh, pine tree called me over because <laughs> it was just so brightly green in this one little spot of the, the prairie. Used to be a uh, dairy farms way back in the day. It's now been uh, taken over as a park in Day County, in Broward County. It is Dr. King holiday, so no school. So it's an opportunity to find a park I've never been to. And here I am. Good day, my friends. It is Mary T. Enjoying the great outdoors and this beautiful sunlight, beautiful sun and the beautiful blue sky. So uh, we'll be exploring this together. Thanks so much for being here. Taking an opportunity to view something you've never seen before is one of my joys. Here we have, I hope it's not poisonous, coming from uh, just a, a grass that they have. Of course, they're beautiful in their own right along the sidewalk, but the coloration of this particular plant, of course, caught my eye and I had to share it with you. Well, it is in the southwest corner of University Drive and the Florida Turnpike, which is a major expressway artery. So we can hear the traffic in the background, but that's okay. I've got blue sky and trees and grasses and you all right it's purple so you know I'm going to uh, take time to appreciate purple it's quite lovely here I love finding places I've never seen before Part of, I guess it's part of my mindfulness. Keep an eye out for things I've never seen before. Find places I've never been before. And see what I can see. And of course, as we, in mindful self-compassion, ask what, what does this one need? Listen to the wind rustling the leaves, finding purple to enjoy, taking time to bring to mind someone who makes us smile naturally, gives us a nice little warm feeling. And I'm thinking of all my dear ones who also love purple. We have some very nice pines, which is probably why it's called Pine Land Preserve. <laughs> nice long leafed. And what we would call Dade County slash pine. It's nice to see really large specimens of them and the little ones. The ones that have taken root. And the little tinier babies. Oh, we got one coming up on the sidewalk here. It's nice to see that even in our urban environment, they've carved out, I think they said 137 acres with significant population of the pines. Of course, as you can see, some of these pines are very, very straight trunked, which would have made them back in time perfect specimens to be used for lumber for building. Aren't too many examples of the native pine buildings and homes left, sadly.
coming this way on the path because there's a bird chirping like crazy. Oh, I forgot to mention we're near a private airport. I'll let you know as soon as I can see it. see it it's a woodpecker hey I don't think it's the same one I saw during meditation this morning but it's there let's see if we can get him he's hopping around up there there he is he's flitting around very chatty I wonder if there's a meeting ritual dance here. It's going from one branch to the other. Oh, yes, I just think I see the female as well. I'm going to check with my binoculars. Okay. It is not meeting ritual. It is a get away from my favorite hall where I've been putting food. Two different species. Doing a little tussle there. Let's see if I can get it a little closer. They'll be too busy focusing on themselves then to see or hear me. Oh, there's three of them. Oh my gosh, this is great. Let's see if we can see the one that's available for us to view. I'll let you listen to them chatty. Within about four feet of each other. And the one higher up is the one that's doing the try to convince the larger one to get out of my way, get out of my place. It's a little quieter now. That's cool. So glad I could share that with you. We have a lovely glade right here. Undergrowth, which they allow to grow. They really are making this as natural as possible. Encouraging uh, natural species that can be found here as well as hopefully some animals. Haven't seen any animals except for the Woodpeckers, but that's not a little thing. Woodpeckers are phenomenal. And of course, it's got some clouds this morning, but the sun cannot be obliterated by the clouds, which are moving pretty quickly this morning. We did have a front come in all of southern Florida. Tornadoes, especially on the west coast. It was cool this morning for us. Maybe mid-50s. Now it's a lovely at least 70 degrees. I expect even cooler weather tomorrow. And my heart goes out to all of you in Snowmageddon parts of the U.S. that are getting mass quantities of snow and sleet and icy rain. And for those of you who around the world are dealing with your weathers. Especially my heart goes out to the people in Tonga and in the areas who are dealing with that horrendous ash and poor air quality because of the volcanic eruption. Thinking of all who've been impacted by negative weather events. Okay. If my knee were feeling better, and maybe if I were a little younger, 
this tree is saying, hey, climbing, at least to the second stages of uh, the branches, of course. Thank God for health insurance, but I'm not sure I should uh, endanger myself by climbing a tree. Although that was always one of my favorite joys as a kid. Anybody else? Now there's a tree who's got stories to tell. All those branches coming off the trunk. Going every which way. All the way up to the sky. Junk looks pretty smooth. Wood must be very hard. Woodpeckers have not uh, succeeded. At least in the trunk of the tree. Somebody had a great idea to put benches behind me to take in and appreciate this massive specimen. First thing I thought of was Tolkien's Ents. We've got a live oak in here as well. It was wonderful that they would put out. I knew there had to have been some Native American history in this site, and of course there was. The Tequesta Native Americans inhabited much of South Florida. 500 BCE until the mid-1700s, until, of course, the Europeans arrived with epidemics and enslavement. The Tequestas that survived fled to Cuba, which was also under Spanish control with diseases, but at least with cross water. And then the Seminole, whom you've heard me speak before, came down from areas that were further settled and uh, became part of the United States. They fled into Florida to uh, leave in areas that were uh, where they were not welcome. Of course, we had three Seminole Wars in the early 1800s. And 200 were able to escape with Sam Jones and other chiefs to create small settlements where they settled and they were able to trade. Of course, it does become part of Florida. The U.S. said, hey, drain the water out of your uh, swampy lands, grow food on it, and it belongs to you. So they drained this to grow sugar. No sugar was grown, but it was turned over to cattle ranchers. The land was acquired using a bond in 1989. And of course now, you might be able to see some evidence, it says, of the uh, cattle ranching, but have not come across any yet. But it's truly beautiful. Despite being a stone's throw, our major traffic artery. This is exciting. Evidence of wild mammal. We have some scat. Nice, nice evidence of scat. It doesn't look like bobcat, but it's clearly a critter who's been eating seeds. As you can see, the uh, covering of the seeds in the scat. I'm gonna have to look this up. What critter? That's a large one. It's too big for rabbit pellets. Okay, we even have cactus. And this is the first place I've seen the cactus. This uh, field seems pretty dry. And there's quite a bit of cactus in this field. Let's see if we can take a closer look. I'm not touching the spines. You could if you wished, but I'm not going to. Okay, nice spiny structure. Looks like it had uh, been injured, and it is sending off some new arms. This one's even closer. There's an injury, and another injury, and we've got three spikes. How about that? And of course, if you were looking for evidence that South Florida was under the sea, uh, I guess all the sand will be the clue. Yeah, South Florida only really 
it was uncovered after, I guess, the last ice age, even maybe 7,000 years ago. And of course, there's the lake. I'm going to find the trail and the major highway. And just so you know, we are not far from civilization. Those uh, spiky elements above the trees are uh, the Hard Rock Stadium where the Miami Dolphins and the uh, University of Miami play. Oh, they do lots of concerts there too. Have not been there except once, a long time ago, to attend a high school game. And I actually got to be on the field. It was very exciting. Now we have another fine specimen. It looks like a family that just never wanted to part. The base has to be at least 15 feet around. And as you can see, the individuals, of which are 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, clearly 20, just all decided to stay together. Strength in numbers, right? Strength and honor, as the Romans would say, right? Wow. I've never seen a tree like this. Beautiful. Beautiful. And then, of course, right next door, you have a live oak. With its beautiful leaves in the sunlight. Just a touch of a breeze right now. A nice, nice, dense forest in the back there. Now, this is a real treat, and thanks for letting me share it with you. I'll share the glistening sunlight on the we do in our practice, let your eyes fall on something that is. Okay, now we're on the wetland side. Got a little tree stand that remains, but that silver tree in the middle has caught my eye. I don't know how long it's been uh, in the post-living stage, but even in its post-living stage, it is beautiful. The silver trunks catching the sunlight with all of the multiplicity of how the branches spread out, spread out during life and remain spread out. Now that reminds me that even as I'm getting to, uh, not the post-living stage of my life yet, but uh, the other one-third, This could be a lesson for all of us, right? That we are beautiful. We are gifted and blessed. We are who we are. Which is definitely something mindful self-compassion has allowed me to embrace in my life. Of course, one of my uh, true blessings of mindful self-compassion is Recognizing that I am part of community globally. Embracing one another and the journeys that we're all on. Supporting one another, encouraging one another, caring for one another. In ways that I did not know was possible. So is that mindful self-compassion despite COVID? Or has that compounded the blessings? I'm not going to spend a whole lot of time trying to figure that out. I'm just grateful. Grateful for all of you in our circle of joy. You are my dear hearts. We're in the wetlands and we've got some turtles who seem to know I'm here. 
maybe they're coming to uh, seek some nourishment, which signs clearly say do not feed the animals. Oh. I hope you can see that. Oh, it's gorgeous. And the water is lovely. Lovely green. Yes. And we have a soft shell there. Well, it's nice of them to come and visit. Oh, we got another one. Oh, he's a big one. Nice little eyes. Oh, look, even a bigger one. Okay. And of course, as you know, as you can tell, we're in the uh, wetland side, and it was reclaimed. They had, uh, of course, back at, years ago, drained this area, thinking it would be useful for uh, sugar raising and then cattle raising. So they've been able to reclaim the wetlands by digging deep into the ground to at least the water table so that the water would uh, come back. And of course, it gives us an opportunity to enjoy what I enjoy most about sunlight on water. And we'll go ahead and take some time to enjoy that. We've got some nice coloration in the, in the water. Let me go ahead and set us up here. And yes, that's the traffic just to the south of us. But we'll enjoy sunlight on the water. sun on the waters. Very calming and comforting for me. Despite the traffic. Of course, this is some of what grows below the water. I'm not exactly sure what it's called, but something phyto comes to my mind. And it will be uh, released from the patches. As we get closer, we'll find the patches. Where uh, might be nurseries for small. Oh, we got a, we got a Louisiana heron here. Let me see if I can. It's near the the PVC structure. It is so bright here. I can't actually see very well. Loggerhead Shrike, and I saw the uh, woodpeckers. This is the first one I've ever seen for today. Oh, this is a good place for us to bring to a close this mindful stroll. Looking westward to the reclaimed marsh. I don't see any critters down here, but again, the sunlight on the water. It's a perfect way for us to end this. So again, thank you for taking time to be with me. Take care, my friends.